exclusive home of the Complete 30 for 30 Library. Welcome everybody to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Coverage of the Geico Top Flight Invite continues. The best club basketball players in the country getting together and showcasing their skills. It's LABC out of California on deck to take on Bishop O'Connell from Arlington, Virginia. Our schedule for the day looks like this. Had some great games thus far. The Blue Knights, Mercy Miller leading the way early with 31 points. Then A.J. Dibonso on center stage, not disappointing for prolific prep. Now it's LABC at Bishop O'Connell here on ESPNU. Later on tonight, 9 Eastern time, the Explorers out of South Florida taking on the Florida Eagles out of Central Florida for the championship. Should be fun. We've absolutely had a blast, and we're thrilled you're still with us, everybody. Drew Felios alongside the former Purdue star, Rafael Davis. So LABC, Trent Perry, made his college commitment to USC on Friday. He has been spectacular to watch all weekend. Trent Perry has been an outstanding floor general for this LABC squad. They had full control the entire game against, against Arenado yesterday. He was the guy on the floor making everything happen. 11 big points in that second half. You look at Trent Perry. He's not the biggest guy on the floor, probably not even the most skilled, but what is that X factor that he has that just makes him stand out? He's a winner, and he doesn't quit. They got down 24 points the other night. He got them all the way back down to within one. And you can see to start the game yesterday, he had it on his mind that he was going to come out and get a win. Committed to USC a couple nights ago, averaging 19 and a half points over the last two, six assists. He can do it on the ball. He can do it off the ball. And then when he gets into his mid-range game, he's in his bag. For Bishop O'Connell, get to know this name, Bryson. Tucker, he transferred out of IMG, and here he is playing in Virginia. A subpar performance in their first game, only five points, two of 10 from the field, and he took that on the chin. In the game yesterday, had 24 points, six rebounds, really took control of the game in that second half on a defensive end and let that carry into his offense. He loves to hang on rims. Yeah, he gets off the floor quickly, doesn't he? Bryson Tucker right there wearing number three, six foot six, five star product, son of Byron, who played at NC State and George Mason. And we are underway here from Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas. LABC will wear the dark uniforms. See Bishop O'Connell in the white and the blue. So Trent Perry. Handling it now already you can tell they're going to put extra focus on number zero this entire day. They do not want him to go off in this game as the shot comes off and Amari Asser has it now for the Knights. First shot taken is drained. Bishop O'Connell trying to get hot here to start. Quincy Wiley has not seen the shot all weekend that he has not liked. He's an aggressive scorer, can score three different levels, and just put the ball in the basket. Robert Hinton, we're going to get to know him. He's committed to Harvard. Nick Kameni also in that starting lineup. Christian Ori, son of the great Robert Ori, and Dom Bento, number 30, making a lot of splash plays as well. How about these Knights? They're really forcing some tempo here early as Wadley doesn't draw anything on that attempt. Quincy Wiley catching a fancy pass through the legs, just knocking it down. When Quincy Wiley has a clear open to the basket, he gets his feet set and his legs under him. It's a knockdown shooter from deep. So Quincy Wadley, five-star product, six foot three, offers from Georgia, Maryland, Providence, and Villanova. 23 points on night number one, part of that class of 2026. So a young kid, just a sophomore. As Robert Hitt now controls it for LABC. LABC in North Hollywood, California. That's the base for these players. Ori, his first attempt, does a good job following it. Nick Comenia had a really good first half yesterday. 16 of his 19 points coming in the first half. He's matched up with Bryson Tucker in this half. Tucker's a really outstanding defender. See if Nick can get anything going. So Wadley we told you about with A.J. Swinton, Amari Sarah, and Tim Walker in that starting five. Bryson Tucker, the undisputed leader, though, of this bunch. He's a five-star recruit. So Comenia inside to Bento, and now Comenia gets it back. 
could be the most overall skilled guy in LABC's starting five. We told you about Trent Perry, but Coach David Rabibo says Kamenia, when it comes to offense, he is the guy who fills it up first. Tucker rejected by the rim. And the scramble for the ball is going to belong to LABC. Kamenia can just do a lot of different things offensively. He can offensive rebound, get putbacks. He can make an open shot from deep. He can drive the ball to the rim off the dribble. He can get into his pull-up package. It's going to be key in this game to get him some open looks to go along with Trent Perry and Robert Hinton. He's that third scorer that they need to be effective. So now Kamenia sizing things up. Pento top the key. This is a good balance for LABC of veterans and young players on this team. The Knights able to force the steal. Wadley gets it ahead. And both teams trying to get a handle on it here in the opening minutes. You can see the attention to detail Bishop O'Connell has to Nick Kamenia. They know what he can do offensively, and they're not treating him like a scrub. They're on him. They know where he is, and they don't want him to be the guy that's going to beat him. If you're going to beat this team, you're going to do it from the perimeter from Trent Perry, Robert Hinton. Now it's Trent Perry looking to get going here. Steps through the lane. And we've got contact on Perry. Perry's the leader of this team. He rebounds, he facilitates. Just a total winner. High IQ basketball player, 16 points, six assists, only one turnover in the game yesterday. He can make shots from deep. He can get others involved. And what I really like about him is his ability to play with the ball in his hands, but also his ability to play without it and learn how to cut and move without the basketball. USC is gotten a grab bag of top 100 players, according to Paul Bencardi, Campbell, Perry, Collier, James, Arrington Page, Brennan Gardner as well in that group. So two-point lead for Bishop O'Connell. And now this is Perry trying to dribble through traffic. He is going to be the center of attention in this game. Foul called, I believe it was on a Serre. Bento now hands to Perry. Perry tried to get it back to him, and that's kind of a lost start. Bento has got to turn around and see that ball, right? Coach would always say, no matter how open the player is, if they can't see you, if you can't see their eyes, they're not open. It was a great idea for Trent Perry. Just could not see the basketball to execute it. Now we got a timeout on the floor. 5-3 just out of the gates. LABC and Bishop O'Connell. Brought to you by Geico. Bishop O'Connell, 5-3, just underway, leading LABC. Drew Felios with Rafael Davis, Paul Biancardi, ESPN's National Recruiting Director, will join us throughout the broadcast. Trent Perry, it's been quite a weekend for him just soaking it all in 
before the real season eventually begins. Made his college commitment and now trying to lead his team to victory here on ESPNU. So Robert Hitton, the Ivy Leaguer, about to attend Harvard, trying to dish it off. Bento's got to try and run it down and having a problem pick it up and uh, I just don't like that call look like a 50 50 ball there definitely like a 50 50 ball I don't know why you call that on AJ Swinton right there but in the half court LABC has got to find a way to get some ball movement so many times they're trying to attack the standstill defender and go around with the defense is staring at you you've got to be able to move the basketball get some player movement and get everybody a touch five on four now they're going to try and take advantage of the numbers Kamenia well, we saw Kamenia he was red hot yesterday in that second game of this event for him, but right now he has not been able to get on track. I think the athleticism of Bryson Tucker is just really bothering him. Bryson Tucker is six foot nine, around 200 pounds. He's long, he's lanky. With him up on you, it's tough to go around him. It's tough to get your shot over him. And this is what he brings to the table, Bryson Tucker. He's so much more than an offensive player, than a rebounder. He's a good defender. He's a versatile player. Tucker has it, fires it. Not this time. Perry, that's a tough pass to complete. A.J. Swinton able to pick it up. Now it's Walker, strong to the goal. Mm. Yes. Tough move, tough finish by Walker. The Bishop O'Connell got a roster full of slashers. Guys who like to take that one or two bounces and get to the cup really quick. If you're LABC, turn them into jump shooters. Take a step back, make them make a couple over you. If they make one of a high contest, shake their hand. Amenia, they try it back door. And one coming up as Robert Hinton was able to finish underneath. Robert Hinton and Trent Perry, both of them do such a good job of moving without the basketball, making themselves available. Robert Hinton not waiting for the ball to come to him, makes a great back cut to make himself available, and then has the size and the strength to finish through contact for the end one. So the senior, six foot five, going to Harvard. Father went to Princeton and then Harvard Law. This is an exceptionally bright young man at the line, and he's got an incredible motor every time he steps on the court. He'll be an impact player right away at Harvard. He has the mentality, he has the mindset, and the work ethic to really come into the Ivy League and make a difference. Bryson Tucker now leading Bishop O'Connell, the Knights. Amar Amani Acer, eight to shoot. Ty Tucker tried to go back door, just got just enough of it to make it go down. Just throw it up to him. He'll go find it, find a way to put it in. Good thing. Good rotations. Great rotations by Bishop O'Connor in this possession. Robert Hinton. Just no real estate in there. He tries to wheel and deal. Tried to get it to Jimenia, and it'll stay here. Bishop O'Connell defensively was on a string that time. Sorry yeah. about that. See Robert Hinton right there. Chose Princeton, or rather Harvard, excuse me, over Georgia Tech, USC, and Cal. And another foul called here. You see on that far side, Joe Wooten doing his best coaching over there. He's been at Bishop O'Connell High School 25 years. Well over 500 games, a true legend in the game. Now Jimenia going to work on the block. Hinton's jumper, a little strong. Jimenia, easy does it. He surprised himself how open he was. They've been sending two, three defenders at him all game long. So he got that off as a rebound. He didn't know if he should go back up with it. The great finish by Kamini. Under 10 minutes now left to go in the first half. This is Perry off balance that time. Looked like he was falling out of bounds when he let that go. Now it's Walker. Tim Walker with the finish. Tim Walker does a great job of absorbing the contact, still getting the ball up on the glass, high and soft for the nice little teardrop finish, getting himself to the free throw line, a little smile for the camera. Coach Wooten certainly going to like that. Tim Walker transferred in to Coach Wooten's team. Came from St. Mary's Rikin, 
Now he's got offers College of Charleston, Nickel State as well. So his stock is rising. And now it's poked away. The Knights running. Walker slamming. Making it really tough on the point guards. On Robert Hayden, on Trent Perry. They're sending one, two defenders at him. Somebody else has to make themselves available and help these guys on this dribble. Someone's got a flash. This is Ori. Christian Ori. Can't put it in. Another cross court pass. Off the rim this time. And the ball will belong to LABC. Both teams playing at this fast pace. Walker has come out like a man with a head on fire, getting deflections, getting in the passing lane, finishing through contact, finishing at the rim, having a big time start to this one. Knight's really comfortable in this press. Little floater in the lane. Finds its mark. Isaiah Carroll, another unranked player, looking to make a statement. Stepping through now. As it's put up and in by Jaden Harris. Now this really considered the, the offseason for basketball, but both of these teams right now look in midseason form. Pass gets away here. Bryson Tucker off the glass. Starting to get some opportunities. He's been quite offensively thus far. His teammates picking up the slack. This is Hinton. Nothing but that. It's one of those shots that you have to make in transition. You miss that one, coach may pull you out the next level. <laughs> for sure. Oh, Tucker right back. Team's trading buckets. That's the worst feeling, isn't it? When you know you're on the court, you made a mistake, and you look over at the scores table and guys getting up. Oh, man, nothing worse. 100%. Bryson Tucker showcasing his skills here in Las Vegas. Eight-point game. We'll be back. At this great basketball event, you know, Tuesday night, our next NBA preseason game on ESPN2 has got the Clippers hosting defending champion Denver. Coverage begins at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right after college football. L.A. Clippers, an improved team this year. Denver Nuggets defending world champion L.A. Lakers. They're going to have something to prove. Does LeBron still got it? Ray Phil, what do you think? Is one more title in store? AD is going to be coming back hungry as ever. As long as LeBron's playing, LeBron has it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. <laughs> Tipped away. Goodbye. How about the Knights running up and down the floor? Quincy Wadley. He's got offers from Georgia, Maryland, Providence, and Villanova. 
Another turnover for us. Right now they're getting after it defensively. Jaden Harris, two for the Knights. Can't catch the ball right there in the coffin corner. But gotta have someone come back and help him. Knocked away one more time. Aiden Calker has it. LABC's got to be careful here. Bishop O'Connell smelling a little bit of blood in the water. Wadley. Isaiah Carroll now on the floor for LABC. Good recovery this time. Christian Ori on the board. That's what Christian Ori does. He can knock down open shots from deep. He just needs his opportunities. If they can find him, find him in rhythm, he can knock that one down. Big shot right there for LABC. How many great shots did his father have playing in the NBA? Big shot after big shot in critical moments. We talked about the shot against the Kings yesterday. I can still remember after he made that shot, going outside and practicing my top of the key jump. And it started with the Houston Rockets. What a career when you really think about what he was able to do in his time in the league. And man, the championships. How many rings did he win, I believe? Was it seven? Seven rings? Yep. That's like Tom Brady <laughs> quality. And it wasn't like he was just riding a pine, just yeah. taking a back seat for him. He was a part of all of those championships, made shots in each of those series. Big shots. Big shot, Bob. Aiden Cocker here at the line. Cocker fresh off attending the Jay Billis camp over the summer. And now the lead 11 for Bishop O'Connell. Nick Kamenia. Right now they really need his offense. It's only got two points. How about Ori again from deep in the corner? Really good drive by Kamenia. They had to drive the lane, if not for him, making a play for his teammate. If you're Bishop O'Connell, you don't help out of the corner. You don't leave the corner. You stay connected to that guy. Don't leave that open shot. AJ Swinton downstairs to Tucker. Can't get this one to go. The rebound by Perry. Trent Perry. Wheeling, dealing. And he was hacked on the arm. May have taken one, too, to the face as he goes to the deck. Trent Perry decided, if we're going to be in this game, it's going to be because of me. Getting to the basket with his left hand, going up over the bigger Bryson Tucker, able to draw the foul and get to the free throw line. LABC goes as Trent Perry goes. And he's going to have to take off in this one for them to have a chance to stay in this game. Coach Wooten strategizing here. Going to his bench again. A.J. Swinton comes out. Trent Perry, just a, a master of understanding situations throughout the course of the game. Again, just a junior. He's got another year after this year to look forward to before heading to USC. Six-point lead. Tucker again, just oh, so good tough. when he gets to that spot. That's so tough. Showing why he's a top 20 recruit in the 2024 class, a five-star. Has Michigan State on him, Duke, Indiana, Georgetown. He can get to a spot, elevate over defenders. He's a hard-nosed defender. He can rebound, run the floor. Just an all-around good player. Another breakout here for the Knights. Two on two. And no basket going to be caught. I think a push in the back on the rebound. It's one of those breaks where you got to finish it. If you don't, yep. a foul's going to be called. Yep. Here's so many. They've deed him up closely. Ori surveying. Get 30 second shot clock in these games. Here at the top flight, invite. Tipped away by Tucker again. Active hands. Too much. 
That's just too good. <laughs> Bryson Tucker is a load in transition. When he gets going full speed to that right hand, lights out. Shot off by Jimenez. What I love most about Tucker, he just gets off the floor so fast. Foul called here as Baron Linekins is in the game right now. But watch how fast he gets off the floor. One of the best open court players in the country. I mean, he's right there at the rim just kind of threw the ball in. Just showing his versatility all over the floor today. Making pull-ups, knocking down jumpers, getting into the lane, blocking shots, rebounding. It's going to make a coach really happy at the next level. Jaden Harris out to Bryson Tucker now. Tucker going to take a little bit of air out of it this time. Robert Hinton trying to guard him. Shot coming from deep. This is Wadley. Not this time. Bento fighting for it. LABC now running. Hamenia blocking foul call. Really good give and, give and go action right there. So free throws, looks like when we come back. 10-point game, LABC trying to get back into it. Back here in Las Vegas, want to tell you about Monday night football right around the corner. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, and the Monday night crew will be at SoFi Stadium. Tomorrow night, Justin Herbert and the Chargers hosting Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. And guess what? Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, ES ESPN Deportes telecast with Rebecca Lendis. That call will air on ESPN2, so you definitely want to check in to the deuce. And we're joined now by ESPN National Recruiting Director Paul Biancardi, who has been courtside sizing up these players throughout the last few days. And coach, this game right here in front of us, Bishop O'Connell on one side, LABC. Give us some of your observations here over the past hour. I've been really impressed with the defense of Bishop O'Connell, the ability to press, trap, forced turnovers they've been very quick with their rotations and you look at the play of Bryson Tucker I mean he's been phenomenal you can see why he's a five-star prospect Joe Wooten the head coach of O'Connell has told me they're grooming him to be a point guard in the future they believe that he can be an initiator of offense a lead guard he can handle it in transition the next step for Bryson Tucker is can he be a half-court point guard and still score the ball at the same time because we see beautiful mid-range jump shot and his drive to the basket heavy right-handed as Rafael talked about coach is there a concern for you when you think about Bryson Tucker transitioning to a point guard position what about on the defensive end will he be checking other point guards or will it kind of be a point forward situation you think I, I think he's more of a point forward than a point guard, but Joe Wooten, again, sees him in practice every day and just raves about his vision to pass the ball, his willingness. 
And he can find the open man off of penetration. He's got to learn how to initiate the offense. And then you mentioned it. Can he guard a smaller, quicker point guard? I think top flight invite has been a great measuring stick for him uh, playing the point guard position. May not be full time at the point, but he'll play some point this year. Meanwhile, Trent Perry knocks down a three. Jaden Harris returns the favor for Bishop O'Connell. And right now, it's an eight point game. Trent Perry has just been beaming since making that announcement on Friday night that he was going to attend USC. And again, maybe not the most all skilled, talented player that is in this event, but when it comes to heart, Paul, he is something else, number zero. Yeah, zero in the black. He's fundamentally sound. And your fundamentals can take you a long way in this game. It's not about flash and talent all the time, although it's nice to have that talent. But Perry's fundamentally sound with his footwork, his hand-eye coordination, his jump shot it is very, very capable. And I like the way he thinks about others all game long. He really tries to think about his teammates, but he knows for this team he has to score. And we just saw right there zero in the white and gray, A.J. Swinton. Maybe we should talk about him just a little bit more. He's a Florida State commit, still tying up some loose ends, got a lot of talent, just a matter of putting it together consistently night after night. Well, you know, he played for some good programs. He was at DeMatha Catholic at one time. He played for Team Takeover. He was part of the 16 and under Nike Peach Jam Championship in 2002. He is battle tested. He's been at Oak Hill. So now he needs to settle down at O'Connell and establish himself so he can be the player that he wants to be at Florida State. So now Trent Perry at the line here for LABC. Coach, how big is it in the AAU circuit nowadays? When you look at a league like the EYBL, it's no longer just tournaments. It's actually league play. It's conference play. And then you have to qualify to make your tournament. And then it's a tournament play. How big has that been to this new day and age of travel basketball? I think it's given the summer circuit a lot of competitive games. Nike was the first one to really start that whole league play idea. And then Under Armour and Adidas have followed. And it really helps the player and it helps the coaches with their evaluation. Uh, games have meaning, the score has meaning, and teams that want to advance to the championship of their sneaker company have to treat every game like it's important. So it's brought a competitiveness to the summertime. Bucket by Robert Hinton right there, one of several players in this event going to the Ivy League. He'll play at Harvard. And as far as the coaches and scouts that have been in the building, Coach, it's been kind of a who's who over the last three days. Talk about Andy Enfeld, uh, Danny Manning, part of the Louisville staff, was in the house. Who are some of the, the folks that you've interacted with? Well, Kansas has been here, Louisville, Gonzaga's been here, St. John's, Iowa is in the house. Uh, I mean, this is a great venue for college coaches to take a look at not only the senior talent, but underclassmen as well, guys that are coming up in the ranks, who's going to be next. Coaches are trying to build a team to win. So what they're trying to do is see how the players play in their role on their team, because that's what it's all about. You do want to recruit talent, but you have to recruit talent that knows how to play together with other guys. And sometimes I think that's missed with a lot of college coaches. They look for just talent, but they don't look for guys that can fit and play with other teammates. That's why chemistry is so important. Got to ask you this also, Paul. Of course, if you're a coach in today's college game, the transfer portal, sometimes you hate to see it because you hate to lose your players, but is it a little easier to recruit? Because if you can't get a guy out of high school, that portal is always being stocked with talent. Yeah, that portal's, you know, a two-headed monster, right? You can lose guys, but there are guys in the portal that you can find and that can help your team right away. So as much as people complain about losing players, there's players to gain to help right away. I mean, college coaches now don't have to rebuild as much. They can they can reload a new roster. Ball thrown away. Here's Bryson Tucker. Hang on, nice Tucker move. going to the goal. He Ooh. has got such body control. Really he, good move in transition. He, he, he reminds me of Paul Pierce. Like the way he looks, moves. He's got the jab step. He may be a little bit more athletic than Paul, but 
He's got the, the same frame and the same game as a young Paul Pierce. It's a nice nifty behind the back, going full speed, getting to that left hand, finishing through contact. There's not much that Bryson can't do on the offensive end. One of the better open floor transition players that you will see, and like Coach mentioned, he's worked on his ball skills, so when he's open the floor, he can make plays like that. I like the Paul Pierce comparison. I think a little bit of Rip Hamilton, too, in there. The way he gets up off the floor so bit. quickly. A little bit. I coached against Rip when he was at UConn. Rip was a dead-eyed shooter. Mm. I mean, he, he came off for pin downs, curling inside the arc. I mean, he was automatic inside the arc. And then he started to knock threes down. And Connecticut had two of the best shooters I've ever seen in my lifetime with Ray Allen and Rip Hamilton. Mm. But, yep. But Bryson Tucker just seems like he likes to do it off the dribble. He could do it off a catch. He's got great size. I love the way he elevates inside the arc for his mid-range shot. Final 10 seconds here of what has been an exciting first half here from Vegas. Tucker again trying to go to the goal. Dominic Bentho, the big 6'8 forward for LABC, trying to impede him. Substitutions continue. Isaiah Carroll checks into the game. Carroll's been kind of a late bloomer, but really contributing to LABC. Follow right back up. Loose ball. Ori trying to get it. And Ori's going to have a clear path. So a little boost there to the locker room for LABC. It's going to be a four point game 40 to 36. Bishop Carroll will lead. So stay with us, halftime in Vegas. We will review the last three days and tell you what is to come. If you love basketball, you don't want to miss this. Welcome back. It's halftime at the Geico Top Flight Invite. You're looking at the Boozer Brothers starring for the Explorers. They will take the court tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2 as they face the Florida Eagles. Over the last three days, some memorable moments made in our commitments live with Paul Biancardi. And Paul, first it was Trent Perry. He decided to be a USC Trojan. Is a great opportunity at USC next year with Isaiah Collier, most likely being a one and done candidate. 
He's the starting point guard this year. T Trent Perry will step into his shoes next year. A star smart, steady, solid point guard. And we see the leadership ability here at Top Flight Invite. Then there's Liam McNeely. He is going to play later on tonight for the Florida Eagles. <laughs> he made his call early on. What a fun scene. You see the phone that he has in his hand. Every time he makes a three-point shot, he does the cell phone celebration. So I was asking him, who are you going to call to make your commitment? He decided to call Mike Woodson in Indiana, one of the best shot makers in the class. 6'7", exceptionally strong, great footwork, and he has mechanics and preparation that makes him different than the rest of the guys in his class. When it comes to shooting the basketball, he's advanced. And Paul, how cool was it to see Jace Richardson make his college commitment? His father, Jason Richardson, a great player for the Spartans way back in the day, just could not stop smiling. I think that smile says it all. A lot of pressure on this young man. It was close between Michigan State, Alabama. A Cincinnati was in there, but Alabama made a hard charge. It really came down to the last minute and his relationship with Tom Izzo, the players, the program. He just fell in love with Michigan State. He's been on campus several times as a young man. He also wanted to go to Florida. That was his dream school when he was a little kid when they won the national championship, but ultimately, it was Hall of Fame coach Tom Izzo, and he'll be a starting guard for them next season. So take three great players off the board. Eventually, Farrow Compton waiting on his decision. At some point, a four-star recruit, San Diego State and Iowa still in the mix for him. And we got a lot of great players that in the coming weeks, coach, are going to start to make those decisions before the high school season begins. Yeah, the early signing period is the first week in November, you're gonna see a lot more commitments between now and then. Right before Thanksgiving, guys wanna knock it out. They wanna get this pressure off their shoulders and play their high school year without the recruiting being in the forefront. So we have top four out of five guys in the ESPN 100 have still not made a decision. Cooper Flagg is gonna visit Duke this weekend. We could expect an announcement shortly thereafter. So much to look forward to on the recruiting scene. The Boozers will take center stage later on tonight, again, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Forty to thirty-six, your score here at the Geico Top Flight Invite. This is Game Three of Four on the day. We're at halftime. Vegas is jumping. We'll have a lot more from the city that never sleeps after this.
Back here at the Geico Top Flight Invite, club basketball continues in its best form. Top high school talent shining for us. Bishop O'Connell 40, LABC 36, as we get set to begin, half number two. Thanks so much for spending your day with us, everybody. Drew Felios alongside Rafael Davis, the former Purdue star. This game about as we expected. The two stars, Perry on one side, Tucker on the other side, going back and forth. I love what Bishop O'Connor was doing on the defensive end. In that first half, forced 11 turnovers, 10 of those steals, turned those turnovers into 14 points, getting the job done defensively, and then the effort and the attention they're showing Trent Perry has 10 points, but he's 2 of 9 from the field, making everything tough on him. Yeah, Perry's not really lighting it up, but it's those little plays that he makes, and he helps his team in other ways. It's not just scoring with him. He can get others involved, but this is what he does with the best of them. He can make shots from deep, and he finds other teammates. He's a floor general. When he's going, the team is going, he gets everyone involved. But in this second half, he has to be aggressive offensively and come out looking for O's to open things up from his teammates. On the other side, for the Knights of Bishop O'Connell, Bryce and Tucker's just been so smooth. It's almost like he's just gliding around out there on the floor. Just doing a little bit of everything. 12 points, four rebounds, three assists, three steals, making things happen on both ends of the floor. I love when he's in transition. Too, not too many people can stop him from getting to the basket. And then when he's getting to his pull-up game, it's money. But I love how he's improved this handle over this summer to make plays in the open court and transition and finish through contact. So Tucker with 12 points. Look at our first half stats brought to you by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you can save. Rafael, what are some numbers that stand out? You got to love the high assist number for Bishop O'Connell. If you look at their game yesterday, the ball was sticking still, was not moving, didn't have that much rhythm on the floor. But in that first half, they got everyone involved. Everyone felt good about themselves, had multiple people score the basketball. Look at the turnover story. LABC, they're being hurried up by Bishop O'Connell and Tucker. Right now is the man, best player on the floor. But let's not forget about Quincy Wadley. He's got 10 points as we're following his play throughout the weekend as well. So Wadley comes out fire and misses this time, but as Paul Biancardi rejoins us, he's somebody that I think we got to follow. Just a sophomore, still a very young kid, number 24 in white and gray. Yes, he's in the ESPN rankings as a sophomore. We only rank 25 sophomores, so you're pretty special if you're in those rankings at a young age. Between him and Bryson Tucker, they have 22 of the 40 points for O'Connell. Coach, out of curiosity, did, has it always been the top 25 players in a sophomore class, or has that changed? No, we started it about 15 years ago. We did the top 100, which was standard. Okay. Then we decided to rank juniors. We have 60 ranked juniors in the country, which is really difficult to get into. And then we go down to the sophomore class, where we just rank 25. Most of those rankings at a young age is really based on what their upside can be down the road. Uh, if you can find an uber-talented sophomore or junior who's semi-productive, there's a good chance that he'll make the rankings early. The question will be, can you stay in the rankings? That's really hard to sustain, especially when you're ranked really young. That's why I look at a guy like DJ Wagner at Kentucky. When he was on the board as a sophomore, he was the number one sophomore in the country. He finished in the top five as a senior. That means he just continued to work throughout his career. So a good fadeaway jumper we just saw there by Nick Kamenia, 6'8 wing player. It's been a little bit quiet in this game today. Now he's he tries to defend Bryson Tucker. Quick first step here by Swinton, and he'll let it go near the baseline. Kept alive, and here's Hinton running away for LABC. But many of the extra pass. Hinton hands it off. Here it comes from Perry, and that should have gone down. That was a really good look. Talk about those rankings, too. Coach, I'm sure that other college coaches will check your rankings, carrying the credibility that they do sometimes, and that kind of factors into the recruiting, doesn't it? It does, because every team is trying to get the most talented player that they can get based on 
the criteria of not only their offensive ability, their defensive ability, but also the character traits and their academics. Again, when you're evaluating, it's not just about the talent. You're trying to evaluate the person and the player. It's really important to be strong with your evaluations. Look, there's some five-star talent that's not good enough to recruit in terms of character-wise. So you really have to be careful in understanding that not all five stars are the same and not all ranked players are the same. And I said this earlier on another broadcast. There's about a thousand kids that go Division I every year. Doesn't matter what school, but Division I, that's 1% of the high school senior class. So if you go to Division I at any level, you're special. And if all college basketball players are being taken into account, only 6% of the high school class goes on and play Division One, Two, or Three. It's hard to get to the next level. Yeah, without question, the hardest sport to make it in is basketball, as many is going to be fouled on the floor. And, Rafael, I bet there were guys who you played against maybe on the playground or in high school basketball that never made it. They had the talent. They just couldn't put all those intangibles together. Oh, 100%. I love what Coach is talking about because your character matters. How you go about your business matters. Being on time when you're at a camp matters. When you're at a camp, getting in the gym extra, getting extra shots before breakfast. All of those little things matter. You can have the most talent in the world. But if you're a dud, you're a dud in the locker room, you take energy away from your teammates, no coach is going to want you around the program. Going strong Ray with Fell, it. Were you part of the, uh, I'm sorry. Ray Fell, were you part of that breakfast club at Purdue? <laughs> I was, Coach. I started huh? it. I actually, um, I had a rule at Purdue. After we came in last place in the Big Ten, that next season, no matter what we were doing, you had to be 15 minutes early. If you weren't 15 minutes early, you had 100 Mackey stairs. You had to get that 100 Mackey stairs done in 45 minutes. We were playing, uh, we played no games when we turned it around on campus. But yeah, especially well, when, you're up, you. when you're an upperclassman, when you're getting up early, when you're getting in the gym, like a Mercy Miller, when he's getting up early, those freshmen, those sophomores, they see that. And that's how you start to build a culture for a program. When your older guys are doing something without the coaches asking them to do it, and the next you know the freshmen are doing it, and then it just bleeds through. Yeah, it's called ownership, right? When you can take ownership of your team, you're going to have a great team. So the, what is that saying? When you're on time, you're actually late? Oh, yeah. And that was a guy I stood under the clock. I'm watching guys with a stopwatch. <laughs> and the pass and the slam down by Robert Hitton. 6'5 senior headed to Harvard. He is going to light up the Ivy League coach. And I know you can't wait to watch Robert Hitton play at Harvard. And you watch an elite player go to a school like that, he could become a legend. Uh, he could become a stud right away at Harvard. His ability to score, make the three-point shot. He's very good from the mid-range. We see him in transition. He's got a, a good all-around scoring game. I think you can play Robert Hinton both on and off the ball. And with his size and his talent level, there won't be many kids like him in the backcourt in the Ivy League. Over the course of time, he could lead the Crimson to a title. So timeout on the court, and we have got a big time lead change. LABC now up to 44 to 42. Bishop O'Connell's come out a little slow here to start the second half, and Robert Hinton right now the man of the moment. He is dynamic. He's got the big time motor, high energy guy, as described by his coach David Rabibo. Up to the task. Well, let's not forget. This team was down 24 points, LABC, on the opening night to prolific prep. Down 24, they cut it to one with six minutes to go, so you knew they had a run in them to start the second half. Certainly a second half team. This ball taken away. Here comes Trent Perry trying to go the distance. Really good finish from Trent Perry going right at the shot blocker, right at Bryson Tucker putting his shoulder into his chest to negate the athleticism, going up and finish with the left hand. Gotta love guards that can finish around the rim with both hands. 12 points now for the USC recruit. See, this is where O'Connell needs a point guard to get them into an action, get them into a set play. So 46-42.
LABC has turned the momentum on its head. Coach Big Carney, thanks so much. We'll check in with you later. Tuesday night, our next NBA preseason game on ESPN2 has got the Clippers hosting defending champion Nuggets. Coverage begins 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right after college football. So much to do in Las Vegas, including going to watch the Las Vegas Aces in quite a series right now with the New York Liberty. Aces lead that series right now two games to one. Raiders season in full swing. The beautiful stadium built in Las Vegas and also the Golden Knights. That venue is exceptional right next to the MGM Grand. Great place to watch a sporting event. So what has Bishop O'Connell got to do to get back in this game, Rafael? In the first half, they took the lead with their defense. They started pressing LABC, causing havoc. Like I said earlier, they forced 11 turnovers in that first half, scoring 14 points off of them. So they got to ramp up their defense. But LABC is comfortable now. They understand what Bishop O'Connor was doing to them defensively. They've taken their time. They've moved the ball, and they're shifting the defense. They're no longer taking those quick shots. When you take quick shots early in the shot clock, that leads to runouts for Bishop O'Connor, and they're taking that away from him right now. Amani Asser at the line here, the freshman for Bishop O'Connell. This guy's been impressive. Plays for team takeover during the summer. And now suiting up for the Knights. Rattles home, the second free throw. You see here, Bishop O'Connell forming their press again. They're starting to add that pressure back to LABC and making sure that it's not Robert Hayden or Trent Perry that's going to beat him. Hinton tried to attack the rim, lost the ball on the way up. It'll stay with LABC. AJ Swinton right there, four star recruit, transferred from DeMatha. And now playing at Bishop O'Connell High School. A couple wet spots on the floor taking care of that. We've had bodies flying all over the place over the last three days. Had to stop action on a few occasions. Semenya just left all alone. How did he get so wide open? Bishop O'Connell, they've got to talk. If they're switching, they're switching. Right there, just no communication, leaving Kamenia at the basket. He was shocked at how open he was. Bryson Tucker. Now it's Robert Hinton for LABC. Hinton with the spin move, hanging. 
And he'll draw two. Now let's take a look at this inbound play and how in the heck does Nick Kamenia get so wide open here, Rafael? Nick Kamenia just goes out, gets a catch, and then he just slips the screen. He understands that Bishop O'Connell, they're switching everything. So when they jump out on that screen, he just makes himself available at the rim. If you're a Bishop O'Connell, you have to talk. You have to know who's going with the ball. And you see Quincy Wiley right there just jumped out at the basketball. They did not need his help there. Just a little bit of overhelp in the corner. Sends hitting to the line. Second free throw goes down, 50 to 43, under 11 minutes. LABC trailed for pretty much the entire first half, but here they are in half number two, and they are taking it to the Knights out of Bishop O'Connell. Bounce this one down to Tucker. Another good pass in the corner. Tim Walker filling it up. Good find for Bryson Tucker outside of the, out of the post. But if you're Trent Perry and you're coming to trap, you don't have to come and steal the basketball. Come be big and build a wall so Bryson Tucker isn't able to escape out of that double. Now it's hitting being defended. He double dribbled that time. So Walker was able to speed him up, and it'll be Knight's ball. Watching the best high school talent in America. This is club basketball here in exhibition in Las Vegas. Top talent is here later on tonight on ESPN2, the main event. You definitely want to tune in for that. Cooper flag and the Florida Eagles take on the Explorers, led by the Boozer brothers and Jace Richardson, who just committed to Michigan State. Get your popcorn for that one. <laughs> for sure. You're Trent Perry, you've got to make a cut. You can't just stand there and expect the basketball. You've got to make one cut, and if you're not open after that first one, you've got to make a second cut to help the inbounder. A.J. Swinton now gets it into the front court. Tucker, good left-handed move. Couldn't hit the shot, though. And now here's Perry. Got to stop ball. Perry able to cross that one in. Exactly, Drew. No one stopped the ball, so he just took it right to the hole. Trent Perry did a great job in transition of taking what the defense gave him. Didn't force it, didn't try to overpass. Took it right to the layup. Great <laughs> shot by Quincy Wadley, top of the key. Hey, Quincy Wadley, when he's got the green light, look out. Making really difficult plays look easy. Got to tell you about an NHL doubleheader. It's coming your way Tuesday night. Steven Stamkos. And the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're in Buffalo, taking on Tage Thompson and the Sabres at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's Matty Beniers and the Seattle Kraken hosting Nathan McKinnon and the Avs. Coverage begins with the point at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. So a big night of ESPN hockey coming your way. And again, later on tonight, 9 p.m., ESPN2. You want to flip over to the deuce. Florida Eagles against the Explorers. What are you looking forward to most in that game, Rafael? I mean, obviously, I'm looking forward to Cooper Flag and Cameron Boozer. That will be a big time matchup. The number one player in the 2024 class, the number two player in the 2025 class. But then you have the point guard battle. You have Boozer, and then you have Robert Wright attacking each other all game long. These are two of the better point guards on the high school game. Robert Wright yesterday had a game he did not score, but eight assists. And then Caden Boozer, 15 points. Eight assists. These guys love getting others involved. I think that would be a key to the game. Good stuff. Again, coming your way 9 Eastern time on ESPN2. Three-point game here. Robert Hinton it has been a factor. Knights able to get the rebound here, and they'll go to work. Three on the way from Jaden Harris. And we have got a tie game. It's a really good Really good push by Quincy Wiley in the open court, getting the basketball into the middle of the floor, making the defense suck, and then kicking it out for the open three. Perry off the glass. Good body control. Tucker could have been called for a charge there as he kind of leaned in just a bit. Here's Hinton coming away from the back. Circus shot. Trying to bank it off on the reverse. Tucker's going to wind up with it here. 
furious pace by both teams. Extra pass now, going to Wadley. Contact. As Amani Aser came down with it for the Knights. So this foul's going to be on Hinton. And for Robert Hinton, that'll be his second. So leading scores, Trent Perry with 16, Hinton with 12, Hamenia with 10, and Corey with 11. The Knights, they've got four players in double figures as well, led by Bryson Tucker with 14. Here's Ori again. It's been hot today. Couldn't hit there. Wadley lost it. Both teams trying to get control. Who's got it? It'll belong to LABC. So 54 all. Both these teams getting on the deck. You got to love it. From Las Vegas, we'll be back. This presentation of ESPN Club Basketball is brought to you by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you can say. This game, the undercard to the main event from Las Vegas coming up later on tonight. LABC and Bishop O'Connell going at it 54 apiece here at Bishop Gorman High School. And the tip off of that main event again, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Later on, the Explorers taking on the Eagles. The best basketball talent facing off, led by Cooper Flagg, the number one rated player in the country. Trent Perry, the USC commit with the basketball right now. Good take. Good move. Good strong move. Going left, getting back to that right hand. If you're Quincy Wiley, just keep the ball in the front. No need to reach. Just be solid defensively and make Trent Perry a jump shooter. Bryson Tucker, I believe he has not scored here in the second half for the night. So a little surprising there. And let's take one more look at the move by Perry. Perry just has a great pace to his game. Once he sees Wadley reach, he just goes right around him with that left hand. The big slides over, but Trent Perry has the body control to just shift back to that right hand, get that easy deuce off. Ball working its way around the perimeter in the hands of Wadley. Big Dominic Bento. I really like the way this young man plays. Number 30 does a lot of the dirty work for LABC. Now the Knights inbounding underneath. Jaden Harris spin move. 
Two shots coming up from him, and I believe they're going to get Ori on the foul. LABC is doing a great job of taking Bryson Tucker out of this game. Every touch, they're sending two at him. They're fronting him in the post, making life hard for him in this second half. They got to find a way to maybe get him the basketball on that pinch post at the top of the key, be able to make some plays with the ball in his hands. Jaden Harris playing for Team Durant during the summer. Three-star forward here. Getting looks from Missouri, NC State, Texas A&M as well, ranked 47th at his position as Nick Hamenia now brings it up. Hamenia stop and pop from the elbow. Doesn't go down. He'll get another chance. Perry over to Ori. Splash. Good things happen when you pass up a good shot for a great shot. Trent Perry had a good look at it. He saw his teammate, one of the better shooters on the team with the open one, made sure he got the ball on target. Knights trying to return the favor. Good block out this time. Well done by Engelberg, who just checked in. Now Engelberg, little fake. Tried to take it up. Had it rejected. Here's Tucker now. Tucker passes it off. Hey. Tucker just being not as aggressive here offensively as you would think with six minutes to go. I mean, you got to wonder if something maybe is bothering Bryson Tucker because right there, transition, one-on-one, -on -one, him and the defender in front of him. Not too many people in the country can stop Bryson Tucker from getting to the basket in transition. You got to want to see him take that one all the way to the rim. Here's that full court press. And now Perry with 18 points leading the way for LABC. So Perry going to go to the line. Tucker doesn't appear anything is wrong with him. As Trent Perry. Now in the stretch run with six minutes and change left to play. Trent Perry getting really good at taking what the defense gives him. That's how he is kind of changed his game from last year when he was a sophomore to now entering his junior season. USC getting a good one. Free throw goes down now, and the lead is six. So Perry's going to get a little break here, and let's see how LABC responds. Amir Jones going to come in. If you are Bishop O'Connell, you got to make the run now. And I love what they did. Instead of trying to get the ball on the block, they just gave Bryson Tucker the ball and let it say, go make a play for us. Maybe not the right play in that moment, but I love how he was aggressive. He's got to start going for his at this moment. Ori misfires. LABC will have possession. And Hamenia checks in. Engelberg just in for a few minutes, does his job, goes back to the bench. Inbound plays have been interesting throughout the last few days. Seen a lot of different design plays that have been executed nicely. Here's Ori sharing it with Hinton. Robert Hinton spinning, looking for a shot. Tough bounce pass in there. And they're going to get a push. Amir Jones had nowhere to go. And he's lucky there because he had absolutely nowhere to go underneath the goal. One and one now on the way for Amir Jones. Amir Jones eventually going to take over for Trent Perry when Trent Perry departs. Jones, a sophomore, will have at least a solid year to start. And an offensive foul called here. Great job for Ori being standing there and take that charge. I mean, he was there for three, four seconds, just drove right into him, just giving up his body, taking it right through the chest. Wiley's got to see him standing there. He's got to see him there, play off of two feet, maybe get a little floater there, or make a play for somebody else. So 61-55, five and a half minutes left to play. 
And once again, the full court press applied by the Knights. Hamenia handling, and now in the safe hands of Trent Perry. Ori, a couple dribbles, can't make the shot. And we're gonna have a hold here. So as Paul Biancardi, ESPN's National Recruiting Director, rejoins us. Coach, if I'm a scout right now, I'm looking at how these players, especially for LABC, manage time and situation. You've got a lead, it's late in the game, only so many possessions, you're up six, and again, time and place, really important. Without question, they were down four at half, they're up six now, it's a 10-point swing. As I mentioned earlier, they made that huge comeback against Prolific Prep down 24. The heart and soul of this team is Trent Perry, Robert Hinton. But you see the shot by Ori, that was huge, that three on the right wing. This team understands it may be down, but it's not out of a game. And when it comes to evaluating, absolutely. You want to see how teams respond during adversity. So right now, if I'm evaluating the players on the court, I'm now looking at the body language of, of Bishop O'Connell to see how they're going to react to the run by LABC. So there's so many factors when you watch players. It's way beyond skill. Yeah, that's a great take. And we've seen great performances. We've also seen some of the great players kind of disappear a little bit at times throughout games. The one thing about Trent Perry, Paul, is he never disappears. You always know where he is. It's max effort all the time, no matter what the scoreboard says. No, his coach Dave Rubibo told us on the conference call this week. I said, how would you describe Trent Perry? He goes, a winner, a big time winner. And that's what he does. He puts his team in a position to win games. You can't ask for much more from a player and a future point guard of USC. Trying to guard Tucker here. Tucker elevating, can't score. Perry with the defense. And the ball is going to belong to LABC. I'll tell you what, Ray Fell. Right now, he is D'ing up Bryson Tucker as well. I mean, Trent Perry's just doing a little bit of everything. Whatever it takes to win this ball game. I mean, he was two for nine at half for 10 points. In this half alone, he already has 10 points, and he's four for five from the field. Just taking what the defense is giving, smart, steady, poised, patient, exactly what you will want in your lead guard. Look at this passing. Bento scoring and one. Tom Bento finally rewarded for his hustle. I tell you, they are doing, LABC is doing a way better job in this second half of breaking the press, finding the middle, and then Bento stretching the floor all the way at the rim, stretching defenders out, going up through the contact with the nice finish. If you're the back, if you're the back line of that, of that press, you can't let someone sneak behind you. You've got to be in line with the ball and the defenders. Bento getting leaner. He's getting stronger as well. He's just a sophomore. He's got some good hands, Paul. Eventually, you know, Don Bento wants to find his way onto your recruiting board. He's got a shot if he keeps improving. Well, he's got great hands. He's thick. Carves out space. Look at that rebound. That's a man's <laughs> rebound. And the possession was so important to him that he was just fighting to hold on. And he knows who he is. He stays within the lane lines of the paint. But I was really impressed with the pass by Robert Hinton in that last possession that led to the layup. You know, we see the layup, but that throw ahead pass by Hinton, a lot of guys may not have seen that pass. They may not have thrown that pass. So Coach Joe Wooten, he is up right now trying to get the most out of his nights here in the last four and a half minutes. They trail by 11 points. It's gonna be tough sledding the rest of the way here. Here's Perry. Good Another pass. great pass, Hinton with the slam. And a technical foul is going to be called here, I believe, on Hinton, who may have hung on the rim just a little bit too long. I hate that call, but I guess it is what it is. He's showing a little emotion. Trent Perry does a great job of breaking the press with his head up, finding Robert Hinton to the rim, finishing with a score. That's a little hanging on the rim. <laughs> In an exhibition like this, Rafael, whatever, you know, a little style always never hurts. <laughs> Got it. Hinton joking about it right now. You can hear these two teams jawing back and forth with each other. You've got to make them feel you at some time. That's exactly what Robert Hint was trying to do. <laughs> you can see how this LABC team has great cohesiveness. 
meaning that they're down, and, and when they were down in the first half, they never panicked. They still played team basketball. In the second half, everything clicked and came together. The smiles on their face. This is a team that really likes each other. They know each other. They've been together for multiple years. And for Bishop O'Connell, they need to find their identity as the season begins and get that cohesiveness when it comes to moving the ball and defensive chemistry as well, right? Moving five guys together against the ball. Perry rebounds another miss. Distributing so well here in this game. Another three is teed up, and that's Nick Hameni who's finally starting to get on track. Trent Perry just does an excellent job of keeping the basketball until he needs to pass it and then delivering it on target every time. He doesn't give it up too early, doesn't give it up too late. So that knows exactly where the ball should be and when. So Jaden Harris will have free throws when we come back. Trent Perry right now, the floor general for LABC. Getting it to Hamenia, who puts it away. LABC in control. Let's put our eyes on the prize. This trophy going to be handed out later on tonight in our 9 o'clock game on ESPN2 as the Explorers take on the Florida Eagles in all Florida final. This is how we got there. Explorers and Eagles, two mega talented teams. Rafael, something's got to give. Really looking forward to Cooper Flagg, Cameron Boozer, Caden Boozer, Robert Wright. Just a lot of good matchups all over the floor. Whoever makes shots in this one, I think puts the team over the edge. Sounds obvious, but you got Liam McNeely, one of the best shot makers in the class. Jace Richardson, one of the best shot makers in the class. It could come down to which one of those guys make more shots. Saw Kevin Boyle Sr. right there. A little discussion with his players. 15-point game. LABC just breaking out in the second half. Looked like Bishop O'Connell had this game in control at points in the first half, but LABC just absolutely have turned on the Jets, all the faucets on, and the Knights unable to keep up pace. So here's Jaden Harris at the line, six foot seven senior. And he's going to get an extra shot here. Had a lane violation there. I believe it was Christian Ori who stepped over the line. So got to get those feet set. And one of two now at the line. So 14 point lead under four minutes. Hinton thought about it, pulled it back though, and now Perry runs the offense. It's a really good decision by Robert Hinton. He was open, could have shot it, having a good game, but made the right decision to pull it out, run some clock, and set up some good offense. 
As Paul was just talking about, time and place so important. You're seeing that right now with LABC. Trying to work that shot clock down. And how about that ball from Robert Hinton coming up big. He just doesn't go away. You talk about guys not disappearing in games. Hinton plays hard defensively, not afraid to shoot it. Big moments in the game, and he's a willing passer. Now it's Bryson Tucker. Is he going to be heard from before the end? Yes, he will be. Tucker gets a big three there, and they'll call timeout. So finally, number three starting to get involved here, and hopefully it's not too little too late. Tuesday night, our next NBA preseason game is on ESPN2. It's got the Clippers hosting defending champion, the Denver Nuggets. Coverage begins 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right after college football. Talk a little NBA basketball. Paul, what do you think? Does LeBron have a little bit left for the Lakers? Will Denver repeat? How about Golden State with, with Chris Paul now in the backcourt? So many storylines to follow throughout the year. What's your take? Well, first of all, if LeBron James steps on the court, He's good in my book. He's got plenty <laughs> left in the tank. And that body, uh, the frame, the way he takes care of himself, much like Tom Brady, I think he's got a few more years left in him. And I mean to impact games. Maybe his role will change a little bit. But there's still, in my mind, not many guys that can take over a game like LeBron James. I love the pickup by the Warriors by having Chris Paul. It gives Steph Curry you know, someone to lean on during games to handle the basketball. 13-point lead, Perry held that time. Also want to ask both of you guys, of course, USA basketball didn't fare well a month back at the international tournament. Looking forward to the Olympics. Has been announced. Steph Curry plans to play. LeBron plans to play. So the United States is going to put their best foot forward, Ray Fell. I think they're going to need it because the rest of the world has really caught up to, to the USA. I mean, basketball has improved all over the world. I mean, I played in China a couple years ago. It's, I mean, it's huge in China, it's huge in Europe. I mean, you got the Euro League. I mean, you think about the NBA right now, the top five players in the NBA, three or four of them may be foreigners. So, I mean, the game is definitely caught up around, around the world. And I'm just glad that you got LeBron, Steph Curry, guys of that caliber wanting to go out and represent the USA. Now Quincy Watley for the Knights. Trying to wheel and deal, find an open spot on the floor. Or you can't Rayfell, believe it. Rayfell, your point was, yeah, Rayfell, your point was so well taken. The best players in the NBA, some of them are international players. You got Jokic for Denver, Luka Doncic for the Mavericks. And when you think about some of the young players, I think about Shaden Sharp with the Portland Trailblazers. I had a chance to see him at the NBA Summer League. You know, he's originally from Canada, and he went to Kentucky, never played. But I think he's going to be a star in this league. So there's been a lot of international players uh, not only come to the college game, but now they're some of the better players in the NBA, maybe the best. Mm. You got Shai Gilders, Alexander. You got Giannis. I mean, you got so many. Jo Joel and B. I mean, basketball is just a worldwide sport. I didn't even you just yeah. love it. Do you know Joel and B played for – uh, Montford Academy when he was a junior in high school. Sure get yeah. off the bench. Yep. I played against that team, coach. They beat us. <laughs> oh. I believe Joel Embiid would be a part of United States basketball at the Olympics. Yep. As he will choose to play for the United States. It's a pretty good lineup when you think Embiid, Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron. That's the type of team and the talent you need to bring the gold medal back. Oh, yeah, you want the best players representing your country. I mean, for those guys to have the attitude and the mindset to want to do it. I mean, look at Joel, Embi Joel Embiid. He's playing for the United States because of his son. And, I mean, stories like that are just so cool. It just makes basketball. you got to love it even more. Yep, throw Devin Booker in there perhaps in that starting lineup. I think you got yourself a gold medal winning team, but it's certainly not going to be easy. As Perry got tied up that time, 2-11 now to play. And the Knights have been unable to really make a run 
gotten some buckets but just cannot string them together against LABC here late. Harris, the fadeaway. On the floor again, Perry. All over the place here in Vegas. Engine never stops. Quincy Wobbly. Three-pointer is good. Big shot. So let's Bishop see here. Bishop O'Connell scored 40 points in the first half. He only scored 25 so far in the second. Here's a steal. Look out. Oh, left that one short. That would have been big. Oh, that was a big opportunity there. Sitting in the VIP section now is Quincy <laughs> Wadley. <laughs> He's right next to that. Gary Charles. <laughs> and you can see how hard he hit Gary's that couch. Always in the couch is yeah, not forgetting. Gary's always in the front row. Now refresh us, Coach. Who is Gary Charles? Gary Charles, New York City. Longtime legend, AAU coach. He runs the big time event here in Las Vegas, right in this building. He has some of the best talent year in and year out in the summertime. He does a lot of scouting of teams and players. If you're in the grassroots scene, you know the name Gary Charles. Yeah, so many guys behind the scenes in basketball circles. So many great events throughout the country hosting these great teams and great recruits year round. Ori swings it back out. Hamenia now resetting for LABC. Don't want to foul here if you're Bishop O'Connor. Want to play it, make him, turn him into a jump shooter. Don't want to foul, don't want to give up a layup. Trent Perry sizing things up. So tough when he goes to his right like that. And who's going to have possession here? LABC will keep it. LABC has done a great job in this second half. We talked about it earlier. 11 turnovers in the first half, only four in the second half, really keeping Bishop Okano in the half court. They haven't allowed a, tra a transition basket in this half, which is why they have this lead. Hamenia now strong with the basketball. Nick Hamenia, good job drawing two. Hinton will finish and one. Hinton plays so well without the basketball. He's always moving. He's never standing still. He's always trying to find an opportunity to be around the basket and be, make himself available for his teammates. So that's 14 points now for Robert Hinton. So Perry with 22, Hinton with 19, Hamenia with 13, Ori with 14. Done it across the board. Tucker now has 20 for Bishop O'Connell. But LABC look like they are going to hang on here. Again, coming up at 9 o'clock, the main event throughout the course of this three days. The Explorers versus the Eagles. The best high school and club talent in the country going head to head. You don't want to miss that. Flick over to ESPN2 at the top of the hour. Jaden Harris puts in the final bucket and that does it. How about Trent Perry, 22 points. The USC recruit leading the way for LABC as they go two and one on the weekend. Hope you enjoyed it, everybody. We certainly did. For Paul Biancardi, for Rafael Davis, and for our entire crew, I'm Drew Felios, saying so long for Bishop Gorman in Vegas. And congratulations, LABC. We'll see you at 9 o'clock on the news. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>
your first home sees a lot of firsts. From first loves to first steps. Sure, it can be a handful at times, keeping you up at night. Come on now. But with help from the Home Depot, Thank you very much. you'll find the confidence to create the first place you call your own. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. With Jiffy Lube MultiCare, it's our job to keep you moving. With a full range of services from oil changes and tires to brakes, batteries, and more, we've got what your car needs right when you need it. So you're ready for whatever's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. Islam Akashev, Alexander Volkanovsky, the rematch. It will be war. So much anticipation for this fight. Islam Akashev has all the skills. Alexander the Great! I'm the best in the world. I'm not sure we can put a more compelling main event on any UFC division. Kamaru Usman! He is a monster. Kamsa Chimaev! He just destroys everything in his path. UFC 294 at a special start time of 2 Eastern. Buy it on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. We've been living it since day one. Nothing held back. All for the love of soccer.